Hello, 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 my family. Thank you for being here for another video with me today. If you have not already, please do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. Um, this is my first video of the day, and uh, I have another one coming later. I told you guys that I would be telling you about how Disney was different. Disney Channel was different for millennials and Gen Z. So that'll be coming to you later today. But for now, on the anniversary of my grandmother's transition, I want to just take this time to tell you about the woman that she was and express how much I miss her. Um, there's tears here. You're going to hear my voice crack, and that's going to be the tears streaming down my face, but I guarantee you they are tears of happiness because she was such a wonderful woman she was born in 1930 in chicago illinois and she was raised by her grandmother she was the first black female loan officer in birmingham alabama she was the very much loved wife of my granddad who was a deacon in the church in the small city I was born in and much loved by people all over the community people of all colors all races um, she made it a precedence to always have an air of dignified refinement about her she didn't speak very loudly ever um, when oops, excuse me when a person um, was being unruly or undignified, she would tell them that they were being ugly, <laughs> but not ugly in the way that we like to call people today, you know, where we think that people are not adequate in the terms of the social levels that we define, what we define as beauty. No, she meant that you were being ugly in your spirit. And she started a tradition in our family where um, if on the phone, you know, we would say live. We would say live instead of goodbye because that was a tradition that she started. And um, yeah, it's just a beautiful way to say, I hope that you wherever you are in this world, remember that someone loves you and that someone hopes that you're thriving and being your best. And just in case you guys don't know, in this picture, this is from Thanksgiving 2012, I believe. And um, <laughs> the two jokesters that she's wedged in between is my granddad and my uncle Victor who often connect over golf <laughs> and baseball in the kitchen. Um, yeah, I remember growing up with that. I remember going up in my grandma and granddad's house and hearing the old country train whistling throughout the city. I remember that. Um, I remember Sunday dinners. I remember every Sunday we would have dinner at my grandma's house and the beach cobbler, the fried chicken, the roasted turkey, the collard greens, the black eyed peas. <laughs> Those were made from love. I remember that. I remember that. Um, I also will leave you guys with one really, really funny story just to kind of let you know the kind of woman that my grandma was. So I think I had to be about 13. <laughs> And we were sitting in the kitchen folding laundry. And she said, um, I said, uh, Grandma, do you want me to fold these, these boxers for Granddad? And she said, um, yeah, you know, he used to. Uh, well, she said, actually, they're briefs. I said, you want me to, you, you want me to fold these briefs for, for Granddad? She said, well, you know, your granddad, he actually used to wear boxes, <laughs> but then um, he started wearing briefs 
the doctor told him he needed to start it, start wearing briefs because his balls were sagging. <laughs> And there's another time where uh, we had all gone to a theater opening and there was a big, tall woman, big, tall black woman, beautiful legs, big, curvy woman with a big butt. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just just describing the situation. And my grandma, we were talking and I was telling her about what I was studying in school and, and going back and forth. And I just kept noticing she looked at this woman. She looked at me. She looked at this woman. <laughs> And then she goes, uh-huh, you keep eating like you do, you're going to end up like that. <laughs> oh, I hope that you're somewhere happy and thriving and at the side of our Lord and Savior. And I hope that you're somewhere watching over us. And I hope that you still have that same wicked sense of humor somewhere. And I want to thank you because I would not be a fraction of the woman that I am if it wasn't for you. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, yeah. And I also, I wanted to note that this is, this is the woman whose, whose grandmother was a sharecropper, whose grandmother picked cotton. And she ended her life being a respected member of um, the church, a respected member of her community, uh, married to a successful business owner, the mother of five beautiful children, and lots and lots and lots of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And so, with this intense culture war that is going on at this moment where people so deeply want to disparage others and their journeys, I just want to thank my grandmother because I know that I came from a generation of strong women. And Lord, the... the Things that they must have had to endure to get us to where we are today. So I want to leave you guys with that. I hope that um, this has inspired someone somewhere. And um, I will catch you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.